All right, take it away. Can you hear me guys? My voice clear, Ben? Perfect. Let's start guys. So my name is Vineet Talwar. So first of all, thank you so much for, for this opportunity to learn WordPress team. I'm happy to share my knowledge with you guys. I'm gonna begin my slides now. So let me share my screen and then we can begin. Uh, screen two, share. All right, I am gonna start from the beginning. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So first of all, guys, uh, let let us begin. Okay. So today's workshop is about website auditing and conversion optimization. See, your brand success is not measured by the amount of money the company has already made. It it is measured by how much more money the company will make this year. Okay. How many new user correction, new paying users you will get this year? And today I will take you to the journey of how to audit a website effectively and be the conversion hero. Hi, my name is Vidit Talwar and I've been working with various uh, industry brands so far, helping them fix their tech. So you can call me a brand tech consultant and two times founders uh, build the companies from scratch. So I know in numerous ways how not a brand can be succeeded. So I, so how not to fail as Thomas Edison said, I know a thousand ways how not to uh, how build cannot be made. So I know in numerous ways how brand will not succeed. I'm associated with WordPress since 2012. So yeah, this is about me. Now let's get to know you guys. Uh, I would like to ask how many of you guys are developers here? Maybe uh, can you write some messages in the comments? So just I get to know how many of you are developers here? So just say I'm developer or I'm an SEO or I'm a server people. Okay, Andre Khan, um, I assume that plus means you're a developer. I would like to make this interactive guys. So just, yeah, affiliate and successful. Okay, any more? Ben, can you help me get answers also? Developer, okay. Cool. I will wait one more. Yeah, people can type I'm a developer or you can even use the um, emoji reactions in Zoom. Um, yes, thumbs up. Yes. That will also work. Okay, so a couple of messages was about developers. So let us begin, I think. Um, okay, I've been having multiple W websites, okay, and developer. Okay, so let us begin. I will take you to the next slide. So first of all, thank you learn.wordpress.org team for organizing this meetup workshop. This is basically a great way to share knowledge with you guys. I mean, if you like this format, really do give a shout out to the organizers with using this hashtag learnwp on X or Twitter. Uh, uh, and I think this is something like automated slides being turned on, one sec. I don't know why, okay. So I would like to tell you one more thing. This is a two part presentation. In first part, we will be going through some concepts and in the second part, we'll be seeing some examples. So this is an online format. I may not know how many of you are actually, um, do you know, Ben, how to turn off this automated slideshow? Are you... Slides are hmm. They are automatically going away before I'm even able to finish. Are you using Google Slides or using something else? I'm using PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Um, um, they are they turning should... on automatically. Yeah, there should be a setting in the slide yeah. presentation settings or something. Something like that, but never mind. I can maybe go quickly or come back. So sorry for this inconvenience. So first of all, this is an online format. So I may not know how many of you are getting it or not. So basically I would like you guys to have fun. And of course, a lot of memes you will see. So if I need something, maybe just type it in the question. So let's start with this slide. I know this is coming again and again. So this is a typical slide website visit looks like in 2022. So, you know, uh, you come to a website, you figure out how to decline all the essential cookies. You close the support widget asking if it need help or you stop that auto playing annoying video in the background and you're like, oh my God, where, where did I land into? And then suddenly this subscriber pop-up comes in and guess what? And then you try to remember why did I came here as a first place? Well, as a developer, our job is to give user experiences, but definitely not this. And this is my face in the end when I see there. 
okay so let's go to the next one let's talk about buttons amazing creatures you know there are three types of people some who press them once and just wait and there are some one who just don't press and they're like yeah let it pass and there are some people who pass them hundreds of times like this increase of frequency of pushing these buttons is directly proportional to users level of frustration right and you shouldn't definitely do like do this like will ferrell from the movie elf you know because by doing so you're making a lot of people angry see people don't have patience at all your goal is to have a better time to interact with than this see interactive impacts rage clicks so you're not giving people websites you're giving them experiences where they can do stuff beat anything user expects experiences to be interactive in about 1.3 times the point when they are visually ready if not rage clicks happens so this is some example uh, from google that okay if the uh, loading time increases you know it affects the um, it affects the bounce rate and users just leave your website a bad website has a measurable business impact don't let your users wait uh, they don't have time nobody has time in this whole world right so okay so i found these two tweets which are really nice and i'm like okay let me explain show them to you so marcus brownie you know this guy mkbhd who makes a lot of videos so he posted the similar experiences uh, uh on google and john made a uh, again made him reply and they're like you know what this is the kind of things you shouldn't have so basically what i wanted to say is google loves user experience and seo is definitely not a black magic some this autoplay some aspects of seo is relevant and high quality content content accessible to search engines and good seo signals such as core web vitals lies under this last category see a website is not done right if you thought your website is done no it's never done most businesses simply ignore the part of maintaining and continuously improving their website but how how do i fix my website let us uh, talk about different measures what do you need there are certain measures that make your website amazing flawless average or even burst right so what do we need to do work on a website so there are five pillars of website auditing we will not talk about all of them in the details in this presentation we will skim through the first four however ux is our focus so we will take focus more on ux side so if i'm not covering all of them don't be angry maybe we can cover up in the future sessions so let's start with simple security okay we guys have heard yeah 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 everything has to be secure so people have misconception that a wordpress is insecure i know a lot of people might be and uh, not be happy by reading this but guess what this is untrue wordpress comes as a package for you to get started and work on that and wordpress is not responsible how you plan to manage and handle and secure your website if a car is met with an accident it's not the fault of a car is the fault of the driver and guess what you as a developer is the weakest link here okay are you secure so these are the things i want to talk about so there are things like security headers yes there are some awesome these are the some awesome resources actually you guys should make a note or actually uh, start using it and installing an ssl is not the only thing you should do of course ssl is a must but what if your ssl is installed correctly you can check it uh, on various sites and like observatory.mozilla it can tell you or there are also other sites which uh, tell you if your ssl is correctly installed or not let me tell you a story one time i met a cyber security company a couple of years back they didn't they didn't even have a security headers installed i mean seriously that's the biggest irony um previously i used to recommend wp scan but i will not recommend because that has a jetpack product in it and and now they are recommending jetpack product so that's cut from the list and i would recommend wp sec for this thing so these are the tools i would recommend you guys can use basically to improve uh, the security of your website and another thing i want to say uh, if you're using a premium plugin always always uh, buy the plugin and support the devs and do, uh, don't buy from side so support the devs just buy uh, just don't buy from the site which is saying that oh yeah you get the plugin from the discount no always buy from the official website there is not an excuse not to upgrade to even latest minor version always keep everything up to date even your wordpress all the plugins keep your website audited keep the code secure 
don't have any null code and stuff like that. You can also leverage uh, uh, AWS Firewall uh, or they are also offering a, a web firewall so you can give it a try or you can use any security plugin. Next topic is security. There's no excuse to have a bad performance on your website, it's going so fast. You can check out my previous talks on uh, WordPress.tv about performance. I'll be covering, covering some information here. So still loading, I was 19 when I clicked this link. You know, that kind of thing you should not give users experience to. Let's talk about game of, um, and you're like, what is, um? you know, whenever a telemarketing guy calls me and I'm like, uh, he's asking so many questions and I'm like, what are you talking? Um, I, do you mean, um, um, and in the end, the guy gets so frustrated that he even closed that call. And you know, normally this opposite way around, the telemarketing guy are getting you frustrated. See, a bad speed on your website will have less downloads, less donations, or even your sales or any conversions, right? Speed is a ranking factor on search engines nowadays, so we should not forget. And guess what? Google wants you to speed up. And Code Web Vital is one of their metrics they are using. I think they started in 2020. It became in power. I'm not sure about the exact timeline, but something like that. See, Code Web Vital focuses on three aspects for a website. One, loading. The LCP, which is basically how quickly the page is loading. Interactivity, which is how soon you can interact with the web page. Stability, which is CLS. How stable your web page is as it is loading and as the user is interacting with. Core Web Vital metrics are combined with other signals for search, which are also called as page experience ranking factors, basically which are HTTPS, safe browsing, mobile first, and no intrusive interstitials. And it's going fast again. Very good. And I'm not finished yet. So I suggest you take a look at my previous talk and you will get the idea. Sorry, Ben, you were saying something? Yeah, I just found how to turn off that old that automatic switch on the Microsoft slides. Okay. Do you wanna... Can you help me there? Yeah. Yeah. I've just dropped the message in the Zoom chat. Does that help? Uh, click on the slideshow tab. Okay. Maybe then I have to start from this slide. Um, guys, sorry for this inconvenience. I'm trying to figure out also. So, um, click on the slideshow tab. Set up slideshow. I found it, and select manually okay slideshow monitor uh i think okay and okay and i hope it works let us give it a try one more time yep. <laughs> okay. oh, yeah it was really annoying i did not know about the setting thank you so much okay so let's go to the next one performance yeah, this is my face whenever I'm waiting for a slow website to load. There are some tools which you can actually use to find out how fast your website is. So tools of Pingdom, PageSpeed Insights, and so on and so forth. You can give it a try. And it's also inbuilt in your Google Chrome tools. Um, guess what? You should not make you uh, you should make users happy, not lighthouse happy. Perfect hundred hundred is awesome, but are your users really getting what they really need? See, these tests provide single numbers. However, real-time situation is quite different. You need to have a look at that. These are just metrics. Okay, important, sure, but is your website UX compliant? That's also another the key. So next topic, accessibility. I think that, that didn't work, Ben. It automatically moved ahead. So, oh, but never mind. All right. <laughs> never, mind. never mind. Accessibility. Okay, I will try to come back on that slide whenever I have to say something. So accessibility, let's talk about accessibility. I will not focus much on accessibility. As I said, the first topics I will not focus much, uh, maybe for future presentations, but these are some nice resources I can definitely recommend. In Lighthouse Test, it's there. And having an alt text make, improves it. And these are some WordPress good uh, best practices provide, uh, provided by WordPress accessibility team. Give it a try. And this is A11Y project, uh, also giving you checklists. Give it a try. You keep using that. So that, see, I like with the, these memes to explain it. So you will see it all the time and you'll be like, oh, this guy woke me up in this morning or afternoon, whatever, just to show me memes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> all right, next topic, SEO. So is your site reachable in Google? And how, oh, what I wanted to say is, oh God. Uh, and how good your presence is. 
And this is how SEO is done. Go to Google and say, give your, uh, give your greetings to Google. No, that's not. It's a joke, of course. Use any website crawler. So what I would like to do, there are a lot of things you can do uh, to improve your SEO. So first of all, there are a couple of tools that can help you improve. So first thing first, check on web dev measure, how that is suggesting uh, your SEO compliant or not. Use SEO plugin because these SEO plugins help you uh, have that perfect meta text or perfect meta description. Of course, not perfect. You need to write some text there, but it will help you uh, handle stuff. Make sure you don't have much 404s or interlinkings or in your backlinks, if these are not more, much 404s, if there's are external links, you're opening them in new tab and not crawler is not exiting. So there, these are the way you can send them other links. And then you can use tool like Screaming Frog, which will do what? Which will just crawl your website, uh, validate your internal linking validation capacities and will enable you increase traffic and sales. Also helping you improve your pages and thus improving your sales and conversions, right? If you crawl your website and you found that, okay, there are some opportunities to increase your website traffic, you can just improve it there by using these tools. Okay, our important topic is here. So what is basically UI and UX? Are they same or are they different? Most of the time users are confused with the same. In reality, they are not same. To explain UI and UX in single slide, this is it. And to in the language we speak, UI and UX are this. Okay. See, a user interface is like a joke. If you must explain it, it's not that good. So next one. Uh, but reality is most of the time your user experience is this. So whatever your design is designing, it's not always the case. So let me correct it here. So see this, it's not the design at fault. It's UI without any research is at fault. Did you consider all the use cases for your user? Did you even test it as a customer? Or maybe, uh, maybe you will find this part, you know? So user is always reacting different way than whatever your UI designer is preparing. So a testing, 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 and improving is always the key to improve. See, UX and psychology are match made in heaven, right? They are correlated. Always think as your user, you know what? Talk to your real users before building something. Do random black box testing with some potential users. You know, a neighbor who is a friend. You know, just show them your website. Show them your path. Show that, okay, this is what you built. Maybe let them test it. And you know what? Give it a try uh, how that user is reacting to your, uh, your website and then uh, get an idea. So a black box testing is really, really important. There are other stuff like hot jar and A-B test. Also, I would suggest another thing is conducting a research, running workshops with key stakeholders uh, uh, for your company and analyzing the data. And guess what, in the end, test, test, and test. Guys, if you like any part of this presentation, and if you really, uh, so you feel free to tweet it, you can use learn WP hashtag, you can tag me there. And if you like something, just share it on social media. I'm happy to see that. Let's go next slide. See, most of the time developers thought they are making an amazing UI. Okay, whatever the designer gave, they made an amazing UI. But in reality, these are your users. Let that sink in. Okay, so there are different permutation combinations that you need to consider how your users will act in such a way. But guess what? You need to plan it out. UX is the key. A website, no matter how fast it is, it is not usable. If it is not usable for users, it is not worth it. You need to plan out certain stuff like number of uh, traffic you're expecting, what you expect people to do on your website. Are you offering everything that you, your user is actually looking for? Are your users living without doing anything? Test your website in another browser, just like you test and uh, uh, just like you open, um, uh, you know, any website on incognito mode just to check. So test your website there and give it an idea. And also don't forget your mobile users, like what they are expected to do and focus on your user retention, test on your end. As I said, test, test, test. That's the key to succeed. There are stuff like A-B tests that you can leverage. So there are tools like Google use, using Google Optimize and there are other third-party providers also. 
uh, you can also give it a try like Hotjar test. Hotjar is an amazing test. You know, just like you watch a movie at Netflix, you can watch your how people are reacting and you can watch those videos even having a popcorn. I, I, I'm telling you, this is a nice exercise for your UI team and your developer. Give it a try. This will help you uh, find out where your loopholes are and you can take action accordingly. And of course, analytics is also the key. So most of the time, your clients do not understand what they really want. So this is this is the slide perfectly explains uh, how your clients are thinking. So clients really don't know what they want. You have to you know show them, tell them like what they actually want. Another important slide I have, but I would like to take a water break. Give me a second. Guys, if there are any questions, please post them in the chat. Happy to take them in the end. Somebody suggested um, if the auto scroll doesn't stop, maybe you could just share your speaker deck link and then you'll be able to control the speed. Uh, just an idea. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you shared it already, right? Yeah, yeah, but like if you if you want to show the speaker deck on your uh, screen. Um, okay, okay, that sounds good also. One sec. That sounds good. Uh, let me give it a try. Yes, yeah, speaker um, deck is actually uh, blocking me. I mean, this automatically stuff is blocking me. You are right. So there you go. We are at slide. Okay, okay, okay. See if this Sorry works. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, one sec. Um, okay, that's a good idea. So, 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 so. I mean, we tested everything, but we didn't test this thing. As I said, mm -hmm. permutations and combinations. So this is the permutation combination we invented and got chance to test. Okay, uh, one sec, okay, yes. So, do you see the screen, guys? Uh, I, I mean, it's running perfectly, right? So this yeah, is the yeah. speaker deck? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so UX is all about where you are, what your motivations are, what your experience is, and what your interactivity is, and how you feel. So. This is a perfect example that I uh, would like to show you guys. So this is how your UX sees it. And this is how your client is expecting it and what they are sees, but your creatives are like this. This is a perfect uh, website I would like to suggest. They are covering a lot of use cases. And guess what? None of the links that I'm sharing in the slides are sponsored. Not So I'm not sponsored or affiliated by anything. So these are the things that I actually use in my day-to-day -day life or uh, maintaining all the websites. So growth design case studies are covering a lot of examples to give them a try. So, okay, so next slide. I don't know why it came, ah, yeah, good. So UX design is a bridge between your users and your business, right? But user experience, okay. So what I would like to say, your better user experience make more happy users. Design fundamentals should be followed by every website. Maybe there should be a design standard that you guys need to have for your website. So um, one, one more thing I would like to say, somebody was telling me that UX design is easy. No, that's not. So actually that's not the case, right? All, uh, so th then that guy said, all you need to do is make things obvious for every day. Well, guess what? These are your everyday people. Obvious things will never gonna work, right? I'm gonna cover some examples in the second part of this presentation where you will uh, get the idea like uh, like what kind of audience you have in your day to day life okay speaking of uh, speaking of masks similar to this we can't expect our users to react in certain ways so guys ux design is what ux design is is a sequential process so the first part is research basically understanding your users interviewing them getting their ideas uh, finding your personas like as uh, personas, I don't know a lot of people know it, but persona is like you're like putting um, on a mark, like what kind of your typical user looks like. Okay, my user is an 18 to 28 year old, or it's a student or a working professional and stuff like that. So first of all, find out your user personas and based on that, design your use cases or website accordingly. Okay, have like a proper journey maps, like what is a user journey looking like for you? Right. And also 
don't forget to do brainstorming uh find out your user flows have like a proper wireframes and then next step implement your ui prototype so you see before implementation these are two steps involved big steps your research your brainstorming then comes the implementation part basically the ui prototyping front end and back end and the last step is reporting basically usability reporting black box testing split testing a b test hot jar analytics reporting and guess what when you find some problems in the last step all you have to do is repeat accordingly okay you found some problem okay go back to step two then step three then step four okay found another one step two step three step four so as i see this is a sequential process okay so let's go to the next slide <laughs> decoding you this is my so far my favorite slide i would say see uh, I would like to say a company should consider a permanent role for a UX designer or a UX researcher, which helps you design your better UX. Of course, they have the UI designer, but they should have a UX designer or a UX researcher. That would be my suggestion. You should, uh, every company should always do black box testing. As I said, a black box testing gives you the trailer of the film that you're about to release for the audience, right? This picture presents similar sort of stories for there. These are the two users. So the first sort of user is your parents. Parents see that, oh, my kid is happy. We should give them the toy, but this is the view of your kid, right? So it doesn't mean one uh, UX for one user is better for another one, right? So you should, as I said, you interview your potential users, focus on your messaging, how clear your messaging is. You know, sometimes when I land on some websites and I'm like, I always ask my question, okay, fine, you do this, you do that, but what is that you actually do? I don't really get it. You know, the lot of text, a lot of, uh, uh, heavy videos and stuff like that. And that is also not good. Your messaging should be clear. Your content flow should be clear. There should be definite purpose for each page, right? As I said, analyze, identify the trends, test, test, and test. And that's how you will succeed uh, in the UX. And I think I repeat the next slide, but I'm gonna skip, uh, skip to the uh, next one. Um, so, Okay, so let's start with the examples. Before that, I would like to know, is there any question or anything I need to take attention, Ben? So far, uh, not that I, nothing's come in the Zoom chat, but if anybody has a question, um, this would be a great place to ask. Um, you can unmute and ask a question right now if you want, or you can drop in the Zoom chat. Yeah. I see two messes. Okay. Okay. So guess what? Okay, let's go next. So examples I would like to talk about. Now this is very important. Guys, are you ready? Let's have some fun. Okay. I would like to see some sort of messaging here. So here you go. My favorite example uh, is from the country where I'm living in, by the way. I'm living in Germany right now. And can anybody guess? What kind of website I'm going to talk about is Deutsche Bahn, the train company of Frank uh, from Germany. <sighs> does that hurt? That black on red, does that hurt? Yes, yes, yes. That's hurting my eye. I mean, seriously, you're designing a bahn card. You have a black on red. Okay, let's see some use cases. So as a user, when I came here, I hit on that login button. Okay, do you see the domain here? It's bond.e now. Oh, shit. I'm not habituated of doing it like this. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Okay. Now the new domain here is farkarten.bond.e. Okay, this is fine. I want to book tickets. So I clicked on tickets kaufen. Another domain. Reisekunft.bahn.de. Okay, why? Okay, I'm like, this is fine, not my problem. I want to click on the home page. I want to go back on the home page. I don't know if I'm even logged in or not. So I guess what? I click on the login. I click on the home page and guess what? I see the login again. I just did log in a few seconds before. <laughs> so this is not the kind of UX you should give your guys. So don't be Deutsche Bank. 
next example okay um i'm gonna talk about is facebook now you guys would be like what's wrong with facebook it's an amazing website i use it all the time blah 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 can somebody tell me what can be improved on this page it's a general ux question i would like to see the question guys can somebody tell me what can be improved on this page anyone I'm, I can give you half a minute. Anyone, guys? No? Yes? No? Anything? Okay. Doesn't seem like. Okay. It's the form. Yes, the form. It's not intuitive, actually. So as a user, I went there. I started typing my email. I'm like, what did I'm typing in? Is it an email or is it a username? Okay. Then I have to delete it again and come back there. Confused? Let me show you the next example, Wikipedia. And now you guys be like, what is wrong with this guy? What, what's wrong with Wikipedia now? See, as a user, now you see it's duplicate. Username, enter your username. Okay, also not good, but you know what? What's a perfect use case example here? Can anybody guess? Your favorite, Twitter. So in Twitter, when you start typing your email address, this for uh, the phone email username place order goes on top so it's a floating label at any point whenever i'm typing i know what's going to happen or what am i typing in here was it a phone number email username so it's they're giving all of the options so it's always visible to you right so, so it's not duplicate not like facebook okay next example um okay so let me take you to the next example so this is a spanish example so uh, you guys must have seen La Casa de Papel or as we call it, Money Heist in, on Netflix. Um, I'm sure you must have heard of it, I'm guessing. So I was once curious, like, how uh, the Bank of Spain website actually looking like. So I came here, I'm like, okay, this website uses cookies for better running display and collection. I'm like, okay, fine. I may not want to have those cookies. So what I did was I clicked on configure. Okay. Let's see what came next. I'm like, okay, but I wanted to configure. I don't want to do a lot of these steps. I'm like, you know what? I would just simply close this website. <laughs> like seriously, it has to be just there. It, it's very simple. Yes, no, close. Why make it so complicated? Okay, let's take you to another example. So this time I'm gonna use an Austrian example, I was looking at Bank's website. Um, you know what? What's hurting on uh, my eyes on this page is this aggressive red color. So it's so aggressively red that the white text or the navigation is not even clear. So there is a thing called as guys, it's called brand color philosophy. Keep in mind, take a look and always, always design your brand color accordingly, how you frame your brand. As a bank, it doesn't suit to have such aggressive red color. Maybe brands like uh, Red Bull or stuff like that, you know, where, where showing that aggression, energy. Okay, maybe, but again, red color for a bank doesn't always suit. Okay, it's their branding, sure, but this is not good UX in my opinion. Okay, let's see the next one. So next one on my list is, so since we are talking about Austria, I want to take a look at the university. So University of the Vienna, okay. Let's look at this website. Can somebody tell me what's wrong with this page? Just type in uh, here in the chat so that uh, I'm able to answer. Anyone? Guys, I want to make it interactive. It would be great if you can tell me um, what do you see? What's wrong with this? Anyone? No one? Oh, you guys make me sad. So what's wrong with this website is the navigation. Where's all info? Oh yeah, okay. In a way it's, so what I wanted to say, it's the navigation. So why navigation? Because it's so small, it's not clear. And what they are doing is they're having a section to make it uh, clear, right? So it's not clear what, I, what I'm about to do here. Navigation, your navigation is your key area where your users land to your website. So navigation should not be like that. 
Okay, since we are looking at the university, and guess what? I did the same talk for WordCamp Valencia, and I covered this example there also. That's why I'm using the same example here. Okay, what is the issue here? Anyone? It's clear, it's in front of you guys. It's intuitive. Okay, yes, menu. Yes, that's it, menu. You see this blue ugly menu? You see? There is no reason to have ugly menu like this. Okay, except cookie box is also pretty big. The navigation items are pretty small. Okay, the logo is so big. Chat is still working. But guess what? I love one thing about this website. The domain. It's so cool. It's so small. QV.es. Efficient. But you see on the mobile, this is the cookie box. Seriously? <laughs> and the chat is still working. Okay, as a cookie box, I mix. this thing should not work. Why this is working? That means the chat cookie is getting loaded in the background. As a GDPR, not good. Okay, let's look at the next one. And most importantly, the speed. This is what the speed is. And this is the screenshot from last year. I took this screenshot in October, 2022. And you know what the current uh, is? So you can see that the FCP is 16.9, TTI is 38.23, or performance of 12, 77, 42, 91. Let's see the next one. It's still the same. So it's to me, it seems like uh, in one year, there's nothing done with it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It, and we're not there to judge, but I'm telling you, this is not what you have to do. So, and this screenshot, I took it this morning. Okay. Next one, guess what? There is another use case called without www. As a user, if I know your domain, I'm likely to open the website directly, but your website is not available, specifically your top level domain. Subdomain is fine, but your top level domain, if that doesn't uh, point in your www or redirecting to the www version, you're losing out your potential traffic. Let's say I know this domain. It's the coolest domain, and I'm like, I can't even access it. Like, what is going on? Okay, another cool example. Since we are all talking about the bad UX, let me talk about good UX. I really like Tunnel Beer here. Anybody used Tunnel Beer before, guys? It's a VPN client. Yes, no, yes, okay. So, what's cool about Tunnel Beer is their user, uh, the, the beer shape pictures or uh, animations they're using all the time. So this is the amazing best example of a quirky UX. And this is what I call making a boring product, which is a VPN fun to use. Okay, so what I did was I started entering email. And in the next slide, when I started entering the password, Beard just closed his eyes. Seriously, this is really nice. It makes me fun. It makes me laugh for a second, right? Okay, so I was uh, using it again and I'm like, okay, you know what, I want to try uh, connecting it. So when I tried connecting it, oh, there was a nice animation and literally a beer uh, opened a tunnel and then went into it and went to Canada. Let's say I use Canada there and came out of that tunnel, right? Now, okay, this is nice. This looks nice. This feel nice, but there's still one small problem with this one. Can anybody guess? There's one tiny problem here. Anyone? Comments? No? Okay, let me tell you. This is the update notification that they have here. Yes, this is hiding the beer. You know what they could have done here? The bottom area is empty. Maybe they could have shown it here or or, or they could have put it as a small dot in the right side. So, you know, you, they have this right navigation area completely empty. Maybe they could have showed an update notification here or use like a bottom area. It doesn't matter. But hiding here, okay, not cool. Yeah, you, you want to update, sure, you want attention. But still, that's not cool, okay? Okay, so let's look at the next example. My favorite, favorite example. Indian people can relate to it. The Times of India. Yes. Um. Uh, sorry, is there some comment I need to? Mm, okay. Uh, not right now. There are a few questions you can come to in a bit later. Okay. Okay, good. So, Times of India. 
Uh, I was accessing this website from Europe and in Europe GDPR uh, launched there. Okay, fine. So when I came here, th this is the what this is the kind of thing I was mentioning in the first slide. When I came here, I see a pop up on a pop up or a banner on top of a banner. I just landed on the website here. I don't want to subscribe. Let me read some news here. Why? I would just click later. And guess what? You notice one thing on the right hand side here on the top somewhere here, you will see that there's a cookie blog. Still 65 cookies are being loaded. Oh my God. And there's no option to disagree or like, you know, get out of it. There's always an accept in the cookie box. Okay. Next example. So let me come back to German example where I live in, live here. So, and what is wrong with this page? Glad you asked. Everything. I took the screenshot and this is also aggressive red. For a cinema, uh, a red aggressive color doesn't make sense. It doesn't go for a brand philosophy. Your users feel agitated if they if you use such heavy colors. You know, take a look at brand philosophy on internet later on after this call and you will get this idea, like what kind of color schemes you should actually use, right? This is the kind of, this is a screenshot I took it when uh, there was COVID times happening. Okay, so, but then I was like, you know, how, how are they doing nowadays? So I went to their website again this morning. See, this cookie box is fine. Um, this is a sneaky practice. You know, I cannot just close it. There is no close button anywhere. And um, I'm this, this is what business are using nowadays, right? So guess what? I thought I'll just bypass it. So what I did was I tried clicking here, there. I couldn't, actually I couldn't. I'm like, wait a minute. What is this in the background? It was not there before. I'm like, okay, okay, this is fine. But why there's a selector on top of selector? Okay, fine. I'm like, you know what? Let me accept the cookie. Let me go ahead. I went ahead. Okay, so you know, this is what it was looking like. This is fine. They were asking for a, a, a selector where their cinema is. For those who don't understand German, this is. Where, where you're cinemized, you can select your location. And there was this close button. I'm like, okay, I don't want to select close button. I want to know how much uh, their ticket costs or I want to buy a gift card, let's say. This was my use case. So I landed on their website. Utter disappointment. I just clicked on close and there's nothing. I waited for a minute, nothing loaded. This is not the user experience you should give. And for such a big brand like Kinopolis, <laughs> this makes me surprised. Okay, let's look at the next example. If I go to the next slide, my favorite, favorite for Indian people, they would relate to it. You know what? I was um, I, actually I'm glad I noted this again. I also found this example when I was preparing for WordCamp Valencia. I was craving for the music the other day uh, that I was in Spain. I'm like, you know what? I want to listen to Indian music. I went to Google. I went to this website called Ghana.com. So though I think Indian people may know this one. So I'm like, okay, I went here, but why there are like two pop-ups? Hmm. Okay. You know what? I don't want to accept this cookie. I'm like, okay, do not consent. No, wait, sorry. I forgot. Uh, I said, um, maybe I want to see the manage options first. What is happening here? I clicked on manage options and such a long list, such a long list. See the scroll bar. And what is this? Okay, consent, not, but what is this legitimate interest? Guess what? A legitimate interest is another way of saying, give me your data, give me your data. I want to show ads, I want to learn more. This is fine, but this is too much. I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, what I did was I, uh, I just, closed each and every one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I said, no, I don't want to have a legitimate interest. And I managed to scroll down completely in the end. And guess what? I found another option, <laughs> another preferences. So a preferences inside the preference. So to me, it seems like I'm in some sort of a metrics. <laughs> I wanted to listen to music. I didn't want to deal with all this, but to me, after all this, do I want to really want to deal this? I guess no. I would just exit the website. So, but I'm like, you know what? I want to finish this test. So I clicked on the vendor preferences. I'm like, okay, let me see what kind of data they are stealing or they are having. So another 
long list of selectors. See the list of schools. Again, the same thing. Legitimate interest, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm like, you know what? I don't want it. I just selected all of it out and just clicked on confirm choices. I don't want to play this game, really. Okay, then another pop-up came. At this point, I'm like, what is going on? Literally frustrated. Okay, I'm like, you know what? I still want to finish this test. This is an amazing test for the UX case study that I'm doing right now. Another hidden consent box behind another cookie box. As I said, some sort of metric. I still then wanted to consent. I'm like, I did not consent. Wait a minute. Another thing you noticed. There is an um, ad about backups. I'm in IT, but I'm seeing a similar ad. But wait, my cookies are blocked. You see? But why I'm seeing a similar ad? Something is fishy here. I'm like, okay, I also asked the Chrome to block cookies. Something is going wrong. Something is wrong with the website. I'm like, you know what? I don't agree. As soon as I clicked on don't agree, it says your data will be deleted. I'm like, what data will be deleted? Excuse me, I don't get it. Then I did what? I closed, clicked on this close button again, and I saw the screen again. <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of data you want? Then I clicked on it again, don't agree, and I came back again here. Then I clicked on delete data. And guess what? I'm like, what kind of data do they have about me? I wanted to go completely in the end. I wanted to see what's actually going on. So I clicked on delete data. And to my utter surprise, they're saying, okay, delete your account from Ghana, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but I didn't even create an account. I just landed to your website. I just came to a website. Where does my account is? Okay, you want to delete? Okay, fine. I don't know. I assume you have some sort of data. I said, I accept, okay, continue. And I'm like, email ID. At this point, I'm like, okay, this is a face palm moment. I just came here. Okay, but you know what? When I close it again, uh, it came back to the I accept. So it didn't even let me enter the website until I accepted the cookies, right? But I'm here for the first time. That's what the website didn't understand. See, it's not, so if a website has to agree uh, run in Europe, they have to go through a GDPR law. It doesn't matter which country they are in. So, and this is not the kind of user experience a user you, your user should have. They should feel trust from your website. Even if that's an Indian website, an American website, if they want a European customer, they have to follow all the data laws. But to me, this is a clear GDPR violation. Um, I can say that, but at this point, this is the kind of example you should not give to your users. Okay, at this point, I don't trust this website anymore. And I'm like, I really want to close this website, but I still, I'm like, you know what? I, I still want to test it. I really want to listen to the song. Again, I saw the screen. Okay, I'm like, can I just click one and go ahead? You know what? It says, click accept all the checkbox. Back to Pavilion where we started, right? I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's give it a try. So I clicked all and see the number of cookies they're loading. 252 ad cookies. So much of the tracking happening. Mind you, I have cleared all the cookies when I enter to this website and before I even load it, right? Okay, wait a minute. I also said did not consent in the start. Do you remember? And still all the cookies are loaded and relevant ads are seen. Not cool, not an option. Uh, for you to have a bad website. So this is the kind of user experience your guys should, your website website should not have. I mean, I just only covered few examples, guys, considering the amount of time we have for this workshop. However, I would like to take some of the questions in the end. Um, so uh, let's go to uh, the next step. So we covered the example. So this is the last segment of the slide I want to talk about. Um, one second. I want to talk about one more topic before we almost close the site. A performance budget is just what it sounds like. You set a budget on your page and you do not allow the page to exceed that. Yes, right, just like you do it like a financial budget, you should also do like a performance budget for your website. 
performance budget can include a lot of things like your total page size, your number of HTTP requests, your page load time on the mobile network, your FCP, your LCP, and these kind of stuff you should have. And any organization should really, really invest on a performance budget. And, okay, after this, you will have possible issues. Yes, you will definitely gonna be having possible issues. And this is how you make the web efficient and faster. Okay, thank you for your attention, guys. Um, any questions? I would really like to take your questions. And in the end, I would like to leave the link to download the slides. So this is it. Thank you for your time, guys. Let's take some questions. You can download slides from my link tree. You can find the contact here also. Thank you very much, Vineet. Um, we did have some questions come through, so let me read them out for you. Yes. Um, yes. Arjun asks, please give an example for a good sales page UI. Do you have a good sales page UI you can provide? Mm, sales UI, you mean the sales landing page? I think so. Okay. I mean, I cannot think over the top of my head some example, but no, I cannot think any top of the, my head any some example like that. But I've seen a lot of businesses like the... Like I, I really like Google's branding or Apple's branding and how they are dealing with it. But on, other than that, I cannot think any other example that I can really say, okay, this is the efficient one. And this is the kind of thing I'm trying to uh, help brand succeed to have like an efficient UI and have like a proper website. All right. And there's no excuse to have a bad website, as I said. Mm -hmm. um, Arjun, if you have an additional question, you can drop them in the Zoom chat for us. Um, Jean has a question. And when you were talking about um, the login screen for Facebook and um, how, how the field appears or doesn't appear, um, she says, isn't it good for accessibility to have a description? So when you start typing in the field, the subject of the field is still available? See, accessibility, um... So first of all, accessibility, yes, this has to be available. And that's what the example I said, that Twitter is doing an amazing job there. So when you start typing the email address, you don't really know, okay, you are midway and you forgot, okay, what they're asking, are they asking email, username? But Twitter is doing an amazing job at this place. And this is the kind of thing your form has to be intuitive, otherwise you're lost. For accessibility side, uh, I mean, that's handled by your browser side, right? So you need to, have your code accessibility compliant, like so your browsers can read for it. Like, okay, but that's a separate thing. But if you're asking for a UX side, I would say there is a potential improvement. Of course, there are billion dollar companies, so they're not losing revenue or something like that. It's just a tiny way how they can improve their form, my suggestion. So it's not like a revenue loss from them. It's very tiny for them. Jean, if you have any follow-ups to that, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, and then we had a few comments while you were showing the final music site um, about the cookie banner on top of a cookie banner and how you couldn't yeah. leave that. Um, yeah. People were commenting like top management and the UX designers didn't work together. Um, they um, somebody also said um, developers must use scripts that manage cookies and so the infinite pop-ups can sometimes come from these scripts. Um, so not really a question there, but um, different I, people will comment. I can add something. I can, I can add some point here. So guys, yep. uh, one more, The be, I mean, I can really suggest to use some sort of GDPR compliant or maybe a co-provider who can manage stuff like this. I have personally experienced with OneTrust. Uh, I mean, I'm not sponsored by them, but I've experienced with them. And this is working perfectly fine. You can integrate your OneTrust in your GTM and have all your script on your GTM. So if the user accepts the cookies in the cookie box, then only the scripts are loading and you can do like a geo compliant. So if your users are in EU, okay, it works on the opt-out model or if uh, you can set country by country, wherever the country, in whatever the country have, whatever the law you can set for your users. That is the kind of thing I would recommend rather than handling it all in your code. Uh, it makes it easier also to remove. You can save a deployment if you handle everything in the GTM. Okay. Um, 
Jean sort of added a comment. Um, sometimes there are cookie policies that just pop up, show for a second, and then default to accepting all. But I guess if you can use um, trusted third party solutions like this, that would solve that problem also. That is correct. Um, we are coming to the top of the hour, but if anybody had some final questions they wanted to slip in, um, this is your last chance. Um, and while people are typing, um, Vinit has shared his um, social media links on the slide here. So if you have questions after the presentation is over, um, you can connect with Vinit um, and ask him directly. Oh, I, I think that's okay, Vinit. And people can connect. Yeah, this is perfectly ask. fine. Yep. They can even download the slides here, find out all the resources about me, find, follow my work and everything also uh, through my link tree. Yeah. I dropped the link to the slides before, but let me do it one more time in the Zoom chat here. Um, so this link. Um, okay, so sure? yeah, let's let's make this the last question. Okay. Um, can you share some good work which ticks all the boxes? Not Not any website is perfect. Every website is not perfect actually. So one recent example that I can say, my colleague here, it's also in the presentation today, Andre Khan. He did this website. I can say, this is a good example. Built on Gutenberg blocks. I can recommend totally take a look at it. So yeah, this is a good example. Of course, not a perfect one, but that's what he did. So I can totally recommend um, check, his, check out his website. So yeah. shout out to Andre Khan, by the way, for this amazing website. I don't know if it's still there. I, yeah. Okay. And uh, Jean dropped one last comment. So let's get this one in. Um, you were talking about accessible forms before, and um, it, she says you're fine with losing potential clients who have difficulty filling out your forms. It's not just visual disabilities; it's cognitive too. Um, so I guess is there a solution to having a a form that's both good for user experience and also accessible? Like, is it possible to get both in the same go? Yeah, uh, I mean, I forgot the name of that provider. I, okay, I really, I cannot remember on top of my head, but there, there was this provider I used all the time. So it's an intuitive, nice UX. So it says one question, there's a form, it shows the progress bar and there's a next button. So one question per, uh, per page is coming up. Can anybody remember that name? That is a perfect good provider I can totally recommend. Uh, normally you use that website to take feedbacks. I really can't remember. So it's a nice form, type form, there you go. So this is a perfect example I can totally recommend. Uh, this is the kind of form a website should have. A perfect accessible example, which is intuitive, you know what to do, that's a UX. UX models. All right. Um, thank you very much. We will close this presentation now, uh, but thank you everybody for the questions in the Zoom chat. And um, once again, thank you, Vinit, for um, presenting for us today. Um, and I just want to give a bit of a, like a, a Zoom thank clap you. here for you. <laughs> and thank you. Um, this recording will be going up on WordPress TV a bit later. Um, and so I'll put a message in the meetup.com event chat when that goes up as well. Um, but yeah, thank yeah. you everybody for your time today. And I hope we all learned something new. All right. And see you in the next online workshop. See you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you.